Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, created for MIST 2090 by Dr. Nick Barrente and Dr. Craig Piercy under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. Here we'll discuss the systems analysis life cycle. We'll then describe what is project management. Finally, we'll introduce the triple constraints model. In the IS field, there's something known as the system development life cycle. This provides a framework or process for those who want to lead IT-enabled change. In general, the SDLC starts with analysis of the situation. Ask questions like, what can be better? What is going wrong? How can I take advantage of some opportunities? After you assess the current situation, you move to requirements. Once I understand the situation, I need to think about what it would require to improve things. What are the goals, specifications, and must-haves in order to address the problem or opportunity? After I fully understand the current situation and the requirements for a solution, then I start planning out that solution. What will the future situation look like? How will it be different than the current one? How can I make it more effective and desirable? What will the technologies look like that support this future situation? Here I design out what technology should look like and what they should do and their expected contexts. After I design it fully, then we get developers to create the technologies. Once built, we can roll out the technologies, train people on them, and manage the new processes. After implementation, you look to see what's working and what is not. Then you start the process of the SDLC all over again. When analyzing a situation in an organization, it always makes sense to analyze it with respect to the goals of the business, their customer segments, the value the business provides, etc. If you're not going to profit, reduce costs, or improve customer value, are you sure you should be making the change? A firm eye on the business model will help when analyzing any existing situation and will also help identify the requirements for an IT-enabled innovation. The SDLC does not happen by itself. Professional project managers actively pay attention to the budgets, milestones, goals, and activities throughout the process to make sure that the SDLC process delivers what is supposed to deliver, on time, and does not cost too much. Project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirements. Project management is considered to be a hot skill for ISIT managers and has become a career in its own right. According to BP Trends, project management listed it as a top ISIT related job skill in 2010. Salary.com lists project management as a dream job. The graphs on Indeed.com shows an upward trend in job growth for the project management profession. And according to the Project Management Institute's Career Central, U.S. is listed as the sixth in the list of ten countries with the highest salaries for PM. Let's define some important concepts related to project management. The Project Management Book of Knowledge, or the PMBOK, created by the Project Management Institute, defines a project as a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Project management, therefore, is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet project requirements. Managing a project includes identifying requirements, establishing clear and achievable objectives, balancing the competing demands for quality, scope, time, and cost, and adapting the specifications, plans, and approaches to the different concerns and expectations of the various stakeholders. With these definitions in mind, what is a project? A project is a unique endeavor. It has a definite start and stop time, so it's temporary, and it creates value, maybe through a unique product or service. Creating the pyramids, delivering a rover to Mars, creating applications like Twitter or Google Earth, these would all be considered a project. What a project is not. It's not current operations. 
Such ongoing concerns as working in the warehouse, handling ATM transactions, or servicing customers at the checkout lane are considered processes and not projects. When compared to projects, current operations are ongoing and concerned with improvements to existing systems and processes. Think about the self-checkout process at a grocery store, part of a chain of stores. At one time, before it was implemented in all stores, self-checkout was a project. Once it was set up and running throughout the retail chain of stores, it became non-unique and part of current operations. Synonyms for current operations are day-to-day -day operations or ongoing operations. So why do we need a project manager? Here we see something known as the triple constraints. The triple constraints are present in every project. In this model, each side constrains the other and is in turn constrained by the other two. Scope is drawn at the base since it is the foundation of what we do for our client. Executing the tasks that are part of the project scope is how we create measurable organizational value. Project managers must manage for effectiveness and efficiency and quality. We have to effectively use our resources. We have to do this efficiently by managing the schedule and we have to build the system with a high quality. Quality can be defined as customer satisfaction with the deliverables of the project and with how well we deliver what was promised, our scope. In reality, it's difficult to manage the triple constraints. There are many risks that the project manager has to pay attention to and mitigate. Some common ones are related to scope. For example, scope grope. This occurs when a project team has difficulty in defining the scope and deciding what the requirements are. Another difficulty that can occur related to scope is called scope creep, potentially one of the most common terms and problems. Here we add features or capabilities incrementally. These things were not part of the original scope, so sometimes trying to be nice to clients, sometimes good ideas for improvements come later than scope definition. This can be very dangerous to the project's success because generally new features require additional resources and more time. A related difficulty is known as scope leap. Here we have drastic change or an increase in the project's scope. For example, instead of software, why don't you just build me some new hardware? This would require a big change in the project scope. Again, requiring more resources and time in order to deliver that scope with high quality. A project manager's task is to manage all of these things and they must look at how problems with scope, using resources, or managing the schedule might affect the project's quality. For further reading, you can check out some of these sources. This has been a Piercy production.